Go time. Well, because I don't have a light on my camera, you guys can't see anything. It's 5.30 in the morning. It's supposed to feel like minus 20 out. And we're going to try to combine corn. I know you. Uh, some people on other YouTube channels have probably seen uh, guys struggle with corn harvest. Uh, we're struggling as well. In my latest video that I had out, uh, I called Snow Harvest. Uh, we weren't... Well, we haven't combined corn since it'd be a week, which is not horrible, but time is marching on and we want to get at it. So we're going to actually try corn here uh, this morning. I think most of the snow's off it now, actually, so the temperature isn't as critical, but if there's snow on the corn, we actually need to be about minus 12 degrees Celsius for the snow to go right through the combine. And we haven't had those kind of temperatures yet. This morning is like minus 12 right on the right on the dot, but I think because there's enough snow off the corn that we actually can combine and we're hoping to combine here all day. Gonna get stuff moved outside here, cooled off the combine anyways. We're gonna fire up the threshing uh, and the separation of the combine so that we can actually get nice cold air in there to keep it cold. It's been sitting in the back shed here. The cold part and uh, make sure the buggy fires up and warm everything up for everybody so that when we go at six, Everything's warm and people are happy, happy, happy to be doing corn when it's freezing cold out. But anyways, here we go. Okay, everything started and it's ready to go. Good morning. It's Saturday after I don't know how long of not being able to do anything because it snowed exactly, I don't know, eight, nine days ago. We have had a lot, a lot of snow. So we, uh, we've been waiting for a really, really cold night to start and we finally got one last night. It's about 6 o'clock a.m. Saturday right now, and we have everything fired up, ready to go, hoping there'll be no issues. We've done a, a few different things logistics-wise. Uh, we've got Monty helping us today. He's going to run the dump wagon instead of the gravity wagons, because it's just, we can't get those suckers up, up our laneway. It's too big of an incline. I mean, it's not an incline, but... Um, there's snow and ice on it so we're gonna use that just for the weight so he's gonna be running that back and forth we're just gonna take the field closest to home off Jack came home from college for the weekend he is gonna run the elevator that's kind of his baby he loves it I'm back on the buggy and Mark will be on the combine this will be Mark's vlog he doesn't usually do he is always so busy getting everything ready that by the time you see him he's already on the combine it looks like everything's just been seamless well it hasn't been I will be the voice of reason here and uh, yeah so I'm giving him all my footage for the grain stuff because I got too much stuff going on on in the sheep barn in the next lots of weeks so he gets to edit all my stuff I have to be very 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 good at filming myself which I'm not I do a lot of editing okay so this is what we're we're using instead of the gravity wagons, we're using this big mighty dumper. So we cleaned that out yesterday. It was full of ice and snow. Uh, so that's what Monty will be driving back and forth. We're just gonna take the corn off right across the road at the finishing barn. And then uh, he'll come to the grain, the pit at the grain elevator and just, there's a back, there's a kind of a little back door we can use. And, uh, and then he can just tip it up to empty it out. Okay, we finally got the uh, we had to make sure nothing was frozen on the 
overhead bin and, and, and it was. There was some frozen corn kind of stuck up in it. So uh, we ran a little bit of corn through it just to make sure everything was good. Mark's playing around with his combine header to make sure. I don't know what he's doing. He will probably fill you in. I thought I would show you the grain buggy, all the things. So we have, we have right here the scale. It's Bluetooth to the buggy. And as I unload, it will it will record weights. And we can put in whatever field we're in. Hey, he changed this. Just a second, let me change this. There we go. Much better. Uh, so yeah, as this unloads, then it calculates the yield. Um, and then basically it's it's like you have to wait to the very end to figure out what how many bushels per acre we got He just left it was the perfect picture of my camera So he's got a camera on his combine that points towards the buggy that helps me when I'm filling this sucker It's so big. I can't see the very back of it. Uh, so I'm pretty good at lining up Because there's rows because it's corn, but uh, much nicer to have this camera for filling front to back all right, he's left, so let's follow. Well, we got started here and uh, the only issue that I have right now is I got no freaking heat in my cab. I got the thing cranked. Oh yeah, cold. Maybe that explained to me why it's not working. So it's set for 90. It's maybe, maybe. I just broke something. I think I broke the auger. Hang on. I just need a punch. Punch? Yeah, like not a huge one, but. Get that? Tire. It's under the ladder. No, it's the tire. Right there. Where? I don't see it. Oh, here. I got it. I have to sit in the cold combine cab. Oh. Yeah, his heat's I not working. I almost feel bad for you. How much of a shoe go? I told your viewers my footage is the stuff that really happens, not all sunshines and unicorns like yours. Well, people think I, I'm real as it is. Right. Oh, I hope this works. Oh, I are dropping that. Oh. Oh. But we're done before we start. I say dropped in, I'm like, ooh, this is early for this. Yeah. That sounds okay. Yay! Okay, we just blew the shear bolt. So there's a little small bolt on the whole unloading auger on the combine. And if you want to watch my combine clinic video, you'll see the one side of my combine, the driver's side I call it, or if you're standing behind the left side, there's a whole bunch of chains and gears that run the unload system. It's protected by a little bolt, and I think just over time they start to wear from engaging all the time. And uh, I just with the cold this morning, uh, it just uh, it broke. So we just got it fixed. Uh, we're just unloading right here on uh, in the yard at home, just by the shop, where we could grab the tools to fix it. Uh, so we're gonna go back at it. Everything seems to be going pretty good. The combine's staying clean. It's freaking cold. 
Uh, and uh, as I said, I have no heat in my combine cab. It's uh, I got her set for 90 degrees, and it's uh, not 90 degrees in here Fahrenheit. It's more like probably right around two or three. But I'm dressed for it, so it's not a big deal. And when the sun gets up, uh, these caps, because they have so much glass in them, they'll warm up pretty quick. So back at it. Okay, this is the first dump, just a small one, but everything is slow. All the hydraulics are so cold. We're just seeing if our logistics are gonna work okay. I think it's okay. Okay, so we almost got to the back headland and Jack, uh, radioed Mark and said now the elevators plugged or something all the bells and whistles are going off and When he went to shut it off it would not shut off so Mark I'm not you will be able to see how he is reacting right now, but I can only imagine he's Not happy So back to the farm we go You did good, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Oh. So, still uh, just getting started. It is too late. It's like 9, 9.45, just unloading. Trying to get uh, the headlands opened up. Our issue this morning was uh, one, busted shear bolt on the unload auger for the combine, fixed it. Froze my fingers off, but we fixed it. Uh, plugged the leg. And I figured it was just because we had uh, the diverter in the wrong spot and we had the system kind of shut off so it was stuck there. Not anyone's fault, just stupid. And uh, so it plugged the leg and made it back feed. So that wasn't good. And uh, then we fired it back up and Jack ran it again and the leg plugged again. So we plugged the leg twice this morning, twice. Yes, count them, one, two. And... Uh, so, Jack and I climbed the leg, and it's freaking cold at the top of the leg in the wind. Uh, what happened was a little diverter that I fixed, I think in my video operator error, that diverter up there, I didn't have the limit quite right on it, I don't think, so it wasn't going all the way over to switch, and as a result, it was choking the leg. And uh, as it was choking the leg, it uh, would back feed and then plug it. So. Once I got the limit fixed up there, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, those were the three things that were gonna mess up our day and now we can just rock and roll. Well, we actually, after fixing or unplugging the leg twice and 
kind of getting everything figured out, we actually had a pretty successful day. Um, the biggest corn day of 2019 yet. I didn't get a lot of footage just because uh, I didn't want to bug my daughter. She was riding around with me. We were having some daddy-daughter time. Not that I'm really daddy, I'm dad, because she's old. But um, that was fun. So 42 acres were shut down. It's 245, close to 3. Uh, my hope is that we'll dry all night and that bin will be empty for morning and we will do it all over again. So stay tuned. Second day in a row of corn harvest. As I said yesterday after we got the uh, hiccups all figured out, we got 42 acres off. So hoping to do that again today. They're talking a little bit of rain tomorrow and maybe snow, so like wet snow. So I'm thinking we could end up trying to get a little bit more off today than we did yesterday. We filled the wet in there about mid-afternoon and we ran out of corn. You can see the no steam on the dryer. We ran out of corn at 6.30 this morning. I didn't get much sleep last night because I was kind of watching the dryer and making sure it was running right. And uh, just wanted to kind of keep an eye on it, but we're about ready to start. The sun's shining. It's going to be a, a good day, hopefully. Resuming buggy duty. It is Sunday. Day two after November began. Uh, just waiting for Mark to come to resume combine duties. Monty's here already and on the dump wagon which worked really well yesterday we're just trying to wake the dead Jack hopefully we can get this field off today and then I'm not sure what Mark's gonna do I think he was talking about filling wagons uh, from another field because it's supposed to snow again tonight and tomorrow so if we can keep that dryer going that would be nice and as much as we can get ripped off before more snow the better well there he is Have you seen Jack's head? <laughs> well, first hiccup of the day. Nothing major, just uh, couldn't get the burner, one burner to fire on the dryer, and I think uh, just a little bit of moisture from the aeration fan, pushing some of that moisture laden air from drying the corn, uh, and the hot corn sitting in the bottom, and it just wouldn't let it fire, so we let the air, the burner fan run for about five minutes and seems it dried it out enough that uh, the burner's fired. So, we're back to drying corn. Hopefully, we'll see some steam rolling soon and life is good. Well, we finally got jammed up on uh, our timing a little bit and I'm just sitting here waiting for Sandy to come back with a buggy as I'm sitting here full in the end. We're uh, in, a, oh, there she is there. Time to rock and roll. Anyway, we got about 20, uh, 
21 acres off here today. So far, things are running pretty smooth. We're into some corn that was planted uh, May, May 31st. I got, got a card in here where uh, I think uh, the video was entitled Done with Corn? Question mark. But this stuff, uh, it's blowing my mind, but it's yielding uh, quite well. Which I would never expect it considering uh, it was planted May 31st. Uh, the moisture is up on it, it's run around 28. The stuff beside us that was planted a few days sooner uh, it was a fair bit drier. It was around 20, about two points drier. So I can't remember when that 50 acres was planted beside us. Well, it turns out that uh, things are going too well because the wet bin's full. Uh, it's about uh, one o'clock and we got about 30 acres done and the wet jack just uh, let me know that the wet bin fill switch went off and we're going to probably shut down here for a little while, let the dryer catch up and then probably go out later tonight to uh, top everything off. As I said, they're kind of talking rain or crappy weather tomorrow. So I think we'll just fill everything completely full that we can and go from there and see what we can accomplish. So that will at least get this farm off and we might open up another farm and see where the weather goes. It's two, been two beautiful days so can't complain. We're getting some corn harvested. I was kind of hoping that uh, after a couple days of brought in here that we would be close to half done and won't quite be. We'll be about 40% complete but Maybe after today we'll have 80 acres off that we didn't have before we started this weekend. So, uh, can't do it without the help. Uh, it was really fortunate to have Jack come home to help uh, run the pit and the elevator while Monty was running the, the dumper wagon back and forth and Sandy on the buggy. The only uh, tough part about all this is that I'm pretty sure that for the last two days, Sandy has been listening to Christmas music. Let them call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. And we kind of had a rule. It's had. Because it's been broken. Uh, no Christmas music until the corn's done. Well, <laughs> we're not done corn. And Sandy's been listening to Christmas music for the last couple days, so... Every time... Excuse me. So every time I hop into the tractor that she's been driving, I get bombarded with Christmas tunes. And not that I'm a Grinch or, uh, you know, want to be hard on Christmas. Uh, I just don't like the music until the end of the harvest window is in sight. We're not quite there yet, so I myself listen to audiobooks and different podcasts. That's kind of how I spend my time in the combine here and avoid Christmas music. But we're done for a little bit here and hopefully we can fire the, the outfits back up here in this evening, top everything off and uh, let the dryer do its thing.